So in this video, I'm going to show you, hopefully simply, how to connect your Unify USG into AWS using site to site VPN connections and BGP routing. Um, making this video because it took me way too long to figure out how to do this myself. So hopefully I can keep you from having to go through the same struggles I had to. So why use BGP? Why use dynamic routing? The biggest reason would be scalability. Uh, if you just have one or two sites, it's easy to keep track of those IP networks and add them manually. But once you start getting into 5, 10, 15, 20, a whole lot more sites, having to go back and add those new ranges to each site every time you bring someone on or take a site off, it gets to be cumbersome and it's not really scalable. So BGP really helps you with that. And also redundancy. Uh, BGP is smart enough to help you find the best route and to know which ones are down, know which ones are up. So scalability and redundancy are the two big reasons there. In this demonstration, I'm going to keep this real simple. We have one remote site and connecting into the AWS network. Of course, in real life, you'll have a whole lot of sites and a whole lot more complexity and a whole lot more AWS pairings. And for this case, it's just one site into AWS. You're going to need to have some information beforehand. Uh, in this diagram, you can see that on a remote site has an AS number already, and it has a private network already on it. And on the AWS side, we already have an AS number assigned to the VPC and a network in there as well. So we'll need to make note of your remote site's public IP address and your remote site's ASN. Uh, you probably don't have an ASN yet, but you can go ahead and create one. It could be a private ASN, could be public, but if you're using public ASNs, then you probably don't need me. Some things you'll need to begin with. Uh, you should already have a VPC inside of AWS with an ASN on it already. You'll need to have a Unify, uh, either Dream Machine or the UDM Pro or the SE, uh, even a UXG, um, with at least network version 7.2.91. In this demonstration, we'll be using a UDM SE. Uh, you should have devices on both networks so you can test with. In this demonstration, we'll have a remote site. We're going to give it the ASN number of 64914, and there'll just be one network on it attached to it. In AWS, we'll be using the AS64512, and we're just going to have one network attached to that as well. So make sure you make note of your remote site's public IP address and the ASN you want to assign to it. Again, you can make this work using that, but it's a lot easier if your gateway has a public IP. On our USG, to find the public IP, we're just going to go to Devices. We're going to go to our Dream Machine here. Scroll up. And here, under the WAN setting, there is our IP. The next thing to do inside of AWS, we're going to need to create a customer gateway for this new location. We'll then create the VPN site, and then we're going to show you how to download the config. So we're going to go into AWS. Let's give a remote connection a name. This will be remote site one. We'll be using a virtual private gateway. We're going to create a new gateway. And this will be our public IP address. We'll use the ASN number that we had picked earlier, which was 64914. Routing is going to be BGP. And then we'll say create connection. Now, creating the actual connection does take some time. Um, while it's building, let's click this download configuration button that has appeared. These settings are really useful if you have a Cisco or Juniper or Fortinet, some other device that you want to connect, but Unify isn't an option here, so we're just going to pick generic. And we can leave everything else as is. 
download that config. Now this is going to open up a file that looks like this. There'll be some key points of information that we're going to need in order to proceed. AWS is going to give us two tunnels, so we're going to need the pre-share key for each of those tunnels, the VPC public IP, the VPC tunnel private. We'll also need a DH group and the MTU value, those are always 2 and 1436, but these aren't the default values the Unify uses, so we need to be sure to change them to these values. In this configuration file, it's divided into tunnel number one and tunnel number two. So in tunnel number one, there is our pre-share key, again, DH group two, and then the other information we're gonna need is going to be the virtual private gateways public IP, and then the inside addresses. So once you get the information from the config, you'll have your pre-share key, you'll have your VPC public IP, the private IP of your remote site, the private IP of your VPC, the DH group, and the MTU value. We then need to build an FRR file. Unified doesn't make the BGP process very simple or intuitive. You actually have to do it all manually. This can be done with text editor, or it can be done with notepad, or whatever. ASCII text editor you like to use. We're just going to open up text editor and create this file for us. I'm actually going to paste this generic text into the video description so that you have something to start with. And we want to make sure that we change our format to plain text. Okay, so the router BGP is going to be the ASN of your remote site. In this case, that is the correct address. The remote router ID, this just needs to be a unique ID on your network. For simplicity's sake, I usually just leave it as the IP address, the private IP address given by the first tunnel. So, neighbor is going to be the first virtual private gateway address, goes in the first slot, and then in the second tunnel, our virtual private gateway address goes in the second slot. Everything else, you can believe it as is, it will work like this. You should, of course, customize it to your needs, but this will at least for sure get you going. The remote AS is going to be the ASN of your VPC, and that is provided for you right here. In this case, minus 64512, and that's already in there. We're going to need to save this file. We'll just call it remote site one BGP config. Now we can go to our UDM. And we're going to go to settings, routing, BGP. So now we're going to give it a name, call this AWS. Device will be our one device that we have. Upload, we're going to pick the file we just created. And then we're going to click add. And you should see a status of enabled. Lastly, we need to create the IPsec tunnels. So from the same menu, we're going to click on VPN, site-to-site -site VPN. We want to use IPsec, and for the first one, we'll just call it AWS1. Pre-share key will be the key that we got from the previous document. Back to tunnel one. Here's our pre-share key. There, because I'll need you. You can leave your local IP as is. 
remote host is going to be again for this config and that's going to be your virtual private gateway okay your network configuration will be route based your tunnel IP is going to need to be your inside private IP which is going to be this one right here, customer gateway. Network's going to be a slash 30. Routing is going to be dynamic. Under advanced DH group, we're changing it from 14 to 2 on both sections. The local authentication ID is going to be the same IP you just put up here. And then our MTU value is going to be 1436. Yep, 1436. Okay, so gave it a name, put in the pre share key. Local IP left as is. Your remote is going to be your VPC public. Your tunnel IP is going to be your inside private IP. Networks can be a slash 30. Network, remote networks are dynamic. Manually, we're going to change the TH group to two. Local ID, we're changing it to that you're inside private IP again, MTU 1436. Now if we go back to VPN, site to site, we see this first connection is online. AWS has always wants you to have two connections for redundancy, so we're going to go and create it. AWS 2. And we're just going to repeat the same process using tunnel 2 information. Route based remote IP is going to be virtual private gateway. Route based tunnel IP is going to be customer network slash 30 dynamic routing DH group 2 from local ID is going to be that same from before MTU 1436 add VPN site to site okay both are online and up at this point we can go back to AWS and refresh this page state is available here we see one IPsec tunnel is up the other is down AWS usually takes a few moments before the changes are reflected. So we'll just give that a moment. Okay, so after some time has passed, we can refresh our page and we'll see that. Okay, good. So my second tunnel is showing a PHP up and I have three routes from it. The first tunnel IPsec is up, but the PHP tunnel's down. So the IPsec is the pre-share key, is that connectivity, the BGP is that config file we created. So we kind of have an idea as to what might be wrong here, but let's go ahead and do some diagnosing. If you haven't already enabled SSH on your UDM, we need to do that. So we'll go to control panel, we'll go to console, and we're gonna go to SSH. 
and we're going to give it a password. This is what my system is assigned for me. Now you should really only turn on SSH when you need it. So after we're done here, be sure and turn that off. So we're going to go ahead and enable SSH on this guy. We are going to connect over to our remote unit over there. We're going to connect to SSH username root and that password that we just created. And now we're in. So a couple of things we want to check. Let's go back to that config file. And let's see if from our device, if we can ping the AWS side. OK, so we are able to ping AWS on the first private IP. The second tunnel is on. Oh, actually, we're on the second one. So the second tunnel is good. Let's go to the first tunnel. Copy that. Ping, paste, and we can reach that. Okay, so we know IPsec is good on both the first and second tunnel. The second thing we need to look at is our configuration. So. On our configuration, the first one is the one that is not connecting. Let us open up the config that we made. And this one is OK. 221.21. one. 221.21 for the virtual private gateway. 192.6 is the second, or is the first. 192.6 is what we specified over here. But if we look at our config, we see the virtual private gateway is actually 192.5. So there's our issue. Let's go back into our config. 192.5. Let's go ahead and we're going to call this 2, version 2. Let's close that. Go back into our routing, into BGP, AWS. We're going to delete the config file we've already made. We're going to upload version 2. And apply. And now, if you go back to AWS and refresh, and after about five minutes, we can now see that both tunnels are completely up, and I have three routes being advertised from this site. We can go to the site. On the Dream Machine itself, we can do netstat dash R, and this will show all the routes that the Dream Machine currently knows of, and, and we can see that all the remote routes are showing up. From a device on the remote side, we can ping something in AWS, and it is pinging. So we now know that we have the Dream Machine connected to AWS over site-to-site -site tunnels. We're using BGP dynamic routing to receive all of our routes, and traffic is passing, passing in both directions because the ICMP is working. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this helps you, saves you more time than it took me to figure this out. But um, thanks for watching.